Hello friends, is this video on is matter around us pure part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's try to see if we can separate these mixtures. For example, if you see, so we have a mixture of two miscible liquids in this case. Okay, this is example of a two miscible liquids. Sorry, two miscible. Uh, two miscible can be this one, let's suppose. So you have uh, ink and water. You dissolve it. Right, you get a colloid. How to separate the particles? As I know, the these mixture which we have studied now, colloid, suspension, or the solution, they have different substance or different particles. You just need to separate them. Or we have uh, we have a blue ink, right? So in this this ink itself composed of a lot of components. How can we separate them? We'll see that. So we have milk. From the milk, we have to separate the cream. How can we do it? We have to check the black ink is actually a black ink or it is multicolor okay or let's suppose we have to check we have to find out or we have to separate the components of gases in air air we have nitrogen we have oxygen and let's try to separate the nitrogen and oxygen from the air because we have told that air is a colloidal solution so let's suppose we are given copper sulfate right so and how can we get the uh, pure copper sulfate from this impure solution okay or we have two immiscible liquids oil and water how can we separate them okay so we have mixture of salt and ammonium chloride so here here we have some salt and ammonium chloride mixture of these two how can we separate so we'll try to do all these things okay so let's try the first one we'll try to obtain dye from the ink so ink, what is ink? Ink which we use for ink pen is nothing but dye and water. Right? And thus it is a collide. It's a collide. Dye is a liquid. Water is also a liquid. This is a dye. So when you mix this dye in water, you get ink. Ink is the fountain pen ink I'm talking about. Now you have to separate the dye from the sink. What can you do? We will take one beaker. In this beaker, we will put some water. We will not directly heat this ink. We will put the water as shown. On this mouth of this beaker, we will put this watch glass. This watch glass. On this watch glass, we will put this ink. Okay, and then start heating this beaker. When you start heating this beaker, water vapors will come here, and these water vapors actually will produce heat and will heat this dye or heat this ink. So when you heat this ink, water molecules will evaporate because water has low boiling point as compared to dye. So water will evaporate. What will remain here is the dye. So only dye remains. In watch glass, in water evaporate. But actually, if you want to conserve this water, then you have to use some other apparatus where this water is getting you know, stored and then it is cooled to get water vapor. The same apparatus which we use in distillation, we can do that as well, but not required here. Uh, we wanted to prove that this ink has dye. So when you heat this ink, after some time, you get this dye. The water is gone. Please do not heat this watch glass directly. Okay, use this water vapor, water as a medium. Don't heat the uh, ink directly. Okay, and then you can stop heating once you see that uh, no more water vapor is coming up, and you see the whole dye here. So from the ink, actually, you can get the dye. That means ink is actually a mixture of dye and water. Okay. But actually, I'm not trying to confuse you, but ink itself is again a mixture of different color. We'll see that. We'll see that how to separate this. Right. But first we have separated ink from this water. 
ink is again one component and then we'll try to we'll see one process where we'll actually separate this okay so here we are taking advantage of the volatile and non-volatile nature or difference in the volatility so this ink is non-volatile it will not evaporate and we know that water is volatile so this method of boiling a particular solution can be useful to separate any kind of solution where you have one part as volatile one as non-volatile for example so you have salt and you salt mix salt with water or you have sugar sugar you have mixed with water so you can use the same process to separate salt from water also and sugar from water also you can try that take small amount of water let's suppose two three two teaspoon of water and mix one teaspoon of sugar or salt in this make a thick syrup so that you can get the result easily and now start boiling it when you start boiling it all the water will get evaporated and you'll see all the sugar crystals on the watch glass same thing you can try with salt and water as well okay so now as i told the ink itself has multiple colors let's see how can we separate the colors of the inks the ink whatever we obtained from the sorry the dye we have which we obtained from the ink or I can say separate the colors of dye you can say or ink as well because again ink is nothing but the diluted form of dye so what we can do this we can have an apparatus like this okay so here we are trying to separate the color of ink we'll take a thin strip of filter paper there is a paper called filter paper which you get in the market this is a filter paper this is a filter paper actually you can take a thin strip of filter paper and we'll draw lines on it Okay, just to see from where we're starting, just just draw some lines on it, and then put a drop of ink here in this in this part. Okay. Okay, and then a center here, somewhere here, put a drop of ink. Now put this filter paper, whole filter paper, in this jar, and make sure that this dot. Will just touch the water here. You can use the water, water here as a solvent here. So you understand, you take a filter paper, draw some lines. At this point, put some ink or dye, and then put this in this container, hang it properly, and make sure that only till this point it is dissolved in water. Other thing is not dissolved. And keep it for some time. And then you will see that. The water level will rise in this filter paper. You see, the water level is rising. The water level will rise, and with this, the ink here, whatever you have drawn here, you can draw a line here if you want, the ink line. The ink will also go up, and if you see here, the ink actually breaks into parts. Right? The ink, this this ink itself broke into yellow ink, green ink, red ink, pink ink, blue ink. Why? Because this process is called chromatography, where you at least separate the components of the ink. Okay, this process is used to separate the colors in the dye or the pigments. You get the pigments of the national color, or from the blood you want to remove the drug. There also it is used. Okay, so this is a very useful process. Chromatography it is used for filtration where uh, solvent. See, it's all about uh, if you try to understand, uh, we have something called solvent and solvent in a particular mixture, and the goal here is to separate them. Now we typically use some properties. If they have two different uh, boiling points, or they have one is volatile, one is non-volatile. One is bigger in size, one is smaller in size. So if it is, if one is bigger in size, let's suppose, like mud, and one is smaller in size, like water, you can use filtration. One is volatile, another is non-volatile. Example: sugar and uh, water. Then you can use the evaporation process, but in this case, ink, ink particles all are volatile, all are non-volatile. The particle size is also same, right? So you can't actually do a filtration. So in this case of ink, ink has so many components, and each of these component particle size is almost same. But they have different properties. They have different uh, sticking tendency to the solvent. So you will understand this process in the higher classes where we'll see that uh, it, the water level goes up. and it is just like this 
to explain that in a simple term. So let's suppose this is a floor. Assume this is the floor. Okay. And assume all the particle size is small. So you have one small size of, uh, let's suppose iron. One small, same size, same size of, let's suppose you have a lighter thing, uh, let's suppose plastic. Right. And uh, small size of paper, let's suppose. Now what you do, you put a bucket of water in this direction. So what you will see, the iron will move maybe from here to here. The paper will move a little bit more. Right. If there is a plastic, it will move all the more, more, maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. Right. If the, no, just imagine the same thing. Here also, these, uh, this ink has all these three particles. It has iron, it has plastic, it has paper. But the particle size is so small, you can't separate. Right? So what you're doing is you're flushing it with some solvent. So when you flush, since iron particle is heavier, it won't travel much. Paper particle is little light, it will travel more. Plastic is all the more little light, it will travel all the more. Right? So they can separate. Same thing here. These particles have different uh, affinity toward the solvent. So as the solvent goes up, it is just like flushing this floor with some solvent. It goes up. So this yellow particle has more tendency to stick towards solvent. So it goes all the more up with the solvent. It is like paper. The red particles are not that much um, sticking to the solvent. So it will not move that much part. Right? So it will move very less. The pink, little more. So based on that property, the, the property is stickiness to the solvent. Stickiness to. So based on this property, actually, let me write it clearly. Stickiness to solvent. So this is different for all the particles in the ink. And this property is actually used in the chromatographic process. Right? This is like a flushing the whole floor with some water. And this floor has some particle here and this particle are made of different, uh, I mean, this is actually a solution, ink is a solution. And this solution was made of different particles and these particles have different stickiness toward this solvent which, with which I am flushing this whole floor, right? So they move at a different distance. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.